Gentlemen, three lovely ladies. Oh, you sure fell into it tonight. Please, please. They'll be out. Quitting kind of early, aren't you, Henry? On a night like this, you're better off in here. I can't afford any more. Business hasn't been so good lately. I never thought about an undertaker having business worries. <laughs> <laughs> He's bound to get us all sooner or later. <laughs> Judging from your looks, Wilson, you're likely to be next. <laughs> I'll sure try. <laughs> there you are, gentlemen. Stage team. They just come in. Just a team, huh? No stage. Si, senor. <laughs> no stage. Somebody out there, I can't make him out though. Well, just leave it to me, I'll check into this. Huh. Well, I am acting sheriff now, ain't I? Sure, Jim. We just don't want you to get hurt, that's all. As long as it's only a team of horses you're investigating. Well, I can take care of a darn sight more than horses.
can't believe it. How could you do it? The woman started it when she snatched the handkerchief from my face and every one of them recognized me. We had to finish it right there. Ah. Nobody meant it to go that far, but it's done. Where are your men? They sent them back to the ranch like you told me. They won't talk. They know better. I can't stand to think about it. A little child and her mother. The whole territory will be down here. I wouldn't worry, Luke. They'll figure Apaches did it. Apaches take scalps. Nothing to keep you from going back and scalping them. You got $63,000 there. You can give me my share now. I'm getting out. You're planting my share, too. You'll need to go a long way to forget. I wouldn't do that, Luke. We're in this together. I'm not so sure. I want no part of this. I'm afraid I'll have... What's the sheriff going to do? You have to take care of that when the time comes. Who's there? you think so? He came in riding one of the stage horses. I'm afraid it's likely then. He broke in here and killed Luke Joyner. Luke, Luke, Luke. Luke. No, not Luke. He won't go far in this storm. Get after him. I'll join you as soon as I can. We'd better not be seen together for the next few days. Just as you say. Couldn't have come at a better time. I wonder who he was.
It's no use, Mr. Stanley. You can't see ten feet in this storm. Anybody get a good look at him? <laughs> Nobody but Anderson. And Anderson hasn't come to yet. Well, he wasn't much of a deputy anyway. Don't worry, gentlemen. We'll find him in the morning. It shouldn't be too difficult. We're only looking for one man. And when we do find him, I want to deal with him myself. Luke Joyner was the best friend I had. What could have happened to the stage? We're all anxious about that. This man we're looking for probably knows the answer. Seven notes, or after the seven days in the week. Not the seven wonders of the world, you know. As I was going to St. Ives, I met a man with seven wives. Each wife had seven cats. Each cat had seven kits. Kits, cats, man, and wives. How many were going to St. Ives?
are you doing here? I'm on my way out, man. Who are you? I didn't say. Nobody's going to hurt you. I'm relieved to hear it. Why did you come in this house? Didn't you see the flag? I came in through the cellar door. I don't believe you. There must be two feet of sand on the cellar door. Not last night. You've been here all night? I slept in the wood pile. And I'm obliged to you for a jar of peaches. Did you like them? I never tasted better. I think you better go now. With your kind permission, ma'am. Oh. It was 400 wherever they were going. Who? The man with seven wives and the cats and the kits. 400. To St. Ives? Oh, no. Only one. Look, you said the man had seven wives and each wife had seven cats? But I met them. They were coming from St. Ives. That makes only one, me, going to St. Ives. Correct, ma'am. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. There's a man outside. Who is it? Dr. Mason, probably. You see, we have yellow fever here. I'll wait in here. You're on the run, aren't you? What makes you think I'll protect you? I'll leave that to your good judgment, ma'am. Morning, Nadine. Good morning. My, I thought the whole territory was going to blow away last night. Or am I too optimistic? How's the sheriff this morning? His temperature seems much higher. Well, let's have a look. It's a mild type of yellow fever, but that's bad enough. I'll send over some medicine to reduce his temperature. But he's still going to need constant attention. Thank you, Doctor. How much sleep have you had in the last four days? I'll be all right. I've been trying to get someone to come over and help you, but they're all afraid. No, I, I don't need any help. Nadine, do you have any coffee made? Yes. There's some on the stove. Thank you, dear. It's been a bad night, Nadine. I wish your father wasn't laid up. Has anything happened? Some fellow tried to rob the bank. Killed Luke Joyner. Shot him in the back. Same man shot Anderson, but he'll pull through. The whole town's out looking for him. They haven't found him yet? No. Was it somebody around here or, or a stranger? Anderson's the only one that saw him and he can't talk yet. Then he's still in town? Bound to be. Man couldn't get very far on foot. And there aren't any horses to see. Keep a gun handy. Keep quiet. I thought you were in a hurry to go. Who else is in this house besides you? If you want to go, there's nobody stopping you. Who else is in the house? Just my father and he's... I know. 
I heard what the doctor said. Then will you go? No. I think I'll be better off in the sheriff's house for now. With yellow fever? I'll take my chances. Water. Lots of water. Uh. Water. Water. I want some water. 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 Oh, some water. Give me a pan of fresh water and some towels. Oh, go on. say anything while I was gone? What? Sometimes when he's delirious, he starts talking. Oh, they all do. Didn't make any sense. Oh. You've done better with him than I could. Well, maybe I've seen more sickness than you have. You think it's a little out of my line? If what the doctor said was true. It was, as far as it went. This is a right unfriendly town you live in. Then you were in the bank. Why do you want to wear your father's badge? Those clothes in that trunk downstairs would be a lot more becoming. I didn't know you saw me. I'm afraid I couldn't help it. You look pretty good. Don't think I'll keep quiet when I come back here looking for you. I need a water. Uh, some water. Take it easy, you're choking him. Go ahead, give him some. Lift his head. Just leading you out of temptation. I wish you would go now. It's not politeness that's keeping me. Are you sure you can describe him? Well, I looked him over real good. Try and get a sketch of this. I want to get it in the newspaper as soon as I can. All right, go ahead. Well, he was tall. Oh, six foot four inches, maybe. Had a mean face and little beady eyes. What color? Black. Mm-hmm. Hair? Black, too. Long and stringy. Mm-hmm. That look anything like him? Sure does. Sure, it fits him to a T. It's not often you get such a detailed description to work on. Well, I was trying to keep my eyes open. Let's find him. Sure. Well, that shouldn't be hard now that we know what he looks like. Can't be very far away. myself to some of your coffee. There's bacon and eggs if you're hungry. Well, as a matter of fact, I helped myself to those, too. Twenty dollars for bacon and eggs. And a night's lodging. I'm not running a boarding house. Well, drop it in the collection plate next time you go to church. You do it. Or do you ever go to church? Well, they may not believe this, but I once sang in a choir. That must have been a long time ago. It was. It might have been better for you if you kept it up. Yeah, it might. What made you stop? 
Yeah, you grow up. Things happen. What kind of things? Are you still wondering if I shot that man in the bank? Did you? No. Your father uses pretty good shaving soap. I gave it to him for Christmas. Why are you hiding? Half the towns are taking shots at me. If you're not guilty, why don't you give yourself up and stop acting like a criminal? Because my name happens to be Wes Steele. Wesley Steele? Yeah. I never met a notorious outlaw before. No, no, wait a minute. I'm not an outlaw. I didn't think my reputation had traveled this far north. You underestimate your reputation. How does a man like you become a gunman? Well, it's pretty easy once it starts. You learn how to handle a gun, and maybe you learn how to handle it better than anybody else. Must be quite an art. It's one that some people never master. They're just as well off. My father wasn't. He was what you'd call an educated man. Had no use for guns. Thought you should use your brains, reason with people. Your father was right. It was a gun that killed him. I made up my mind then that the same thing wouldn't happen to me. So now you do the killing. And you don't always have much choice. Fellows come along trying to prove that you're not as good as they are. Pretty soon it gets out of hand and you find that you've got to shoot to live. And it's always been you that lived. So far. The Dean. Nadine. Go ahead. Answer it. Nadine. Did he come back? No one's come in since you left. Oh, I was worried about you. He's still in town somewhere. How is Mr. Anderson? He'll be all right, but... What is it, Doctor? They sent out a search party to look for the stage. Stage? All dead. Five people. Elizabeth Nelson and a little girl. Oh, no! That man must be gun crazy. I wish your father could take over. Are you sure it's the same man? Who else could it be? It's the same man. Well, it might be Apaches. No, it's robbery and cold-blooded murder. I ought to leave a man here with you, but... I'll be all right. Then keep your gun handy. If he shows up, don't ask questions. Shoot to kill him. Something wrong, Nadine? No, it's just Elizabeth Nelson and a little girl. Yes, I know. All right. I had nothing to do with that stage. Then who did? Who could have done it? I don't know. They were so sure. They want to be sure. Like that deputy, don't ask questions, just shoot. Can't blame them. I'll give you until dark. Just until dark. That sandstorm sure messed up things around here. Thank you, Mrs. Moe. Oh, and there's a paper in there, too. They're getting together a big posse. That's good. All the roads are sanded in, and they got guards posted at the pass. He's gonna pay for this with his mortal life. Well, I gotta get back. They're making a house-to-house -house search in Mexican town, and likely he's there. Too bad you can't get away to see him when he's caught.
things. Ready. I wish you wouldn't walk so easy. You know, this coffee's pretty muddy. This eggshell will clear it. I want to thank you for what you did last night. That's all right. I fell fast asleep. I didn't mean to, but I couldn't help it. I don't wonder. You should have gone. You shouldn't have stayed here. You know, you don't look anything like that picture in the paper. I saw it, and I hope I don't. What about that other picture that was in the paper, the one of the man who got killed in the bank, this Luke Joyner? What do you mean? Was that a good likeness? Yes. And I guess he was the man I saw in the bank. He took a shot at me. And you didn't shoot back? No. Then who could have killed him? The only other man with him was... But it couldn't have been him. Couldn't have been who? Mr. Stanley. Who's he? He was Mr. Joyner's partner. Ah. That's the doctor. Go ahead. I'll wait in the cellar. All right. Morning, Nadine. Good morning. The doctor's gone. My father's awake. He should be up in a day or so. Well, then I guess I'll be going, too. Well, the roads are all blocked. Everyone in town's carrying a gun. Look, they're looking for a man that resembles that picture in the newspaper. They're not looking for me. Well, at least wait until it gets dark. When you leave, where will you go? Oh, I guess one place is as good as another. Getting kind of tired of running away. But... But where will you go? I don't know. Any place where Wesley Steele will be a name and not a reputation. Is that all you're running away from? A reputation? Well, it can get too big for a man to live with. Where did you get that money? I didn't get it from the stagecoach, and I didn't get it from the bank. Then how did you get it? Suppose I told you I had a little spread and I sold it, that I came by it honestly. What would you do? What would you do? Nothing. Suppose I told you I stole it, what would you do? I said, what would you do? Nothing. What are you running away from? I'm not running away from anything. A body doesn't have to get on a horse and ride a thousand miles to run away. She could run away right down a flight of cellar steps. little jar you put rose petals in? It's my hope chest. Yeah, I've heard of them. Why do you hide it down here in the cellar? You're being too personal. Oh. Well, forget it. I suppose it's only fair. It's my father. It made him unhappy when I got it. So you hide it and run away down here because your father didn't want you to grow up. I'm all he has. He's done everything for me. Mm -hmm. Everything but let you grow into a woman. 
I am grown up. Are you? center of the altar. Vengeance is mine. I will repay. But I declare that each one of us may justly be an instrument of punishment for such cold-blooded work as this. It is a crime not only against these silent victims, but every member of this community. Tomorrow morning, when the minister comes, we will commit these lost ones to the earth. But our duty to them will not be fulfilled until this killer is destroyed. The watch will be kept in the church all night. And it is only right and fitting for the sake of my friend and partner, Luke Joyner, for me to take the first hour. Every trail, every pass is guarded. This man must not get away alive. If he is found, report to me at once. And justice will be swift and final. this watch hour was to be private. Something you want? You. Who are you? My name is Wesley Steele. You're a long way from home, aren't you, Steele? Oh, then you know about me. No, not exactly. That was quite a picture of me in your town newspaper. I'm the man you're looking for. You're mistaken. We're not looking for you. I shot your deputy. I'm the man your partner shot at in the bank. You remember your partner, don't you? You were right behind him when he was killed. Right behind him. We've got nothing against you, Steele. You can ride out of town tonight. Ride out with me and my men. Go your own way. 
I wouldn't enjoy riding with a man that shot his partner in the back. And that's not all you've got to answer for. You must be out of your head. You've got no quarrel with me. If you think I had something to do with that stage holdup... I know you had something to do with it. I was in your bank the night you were talking it over. The gun that killed that little girl was working for you. Any man's got a quarrel with you. I won't draw. I'm no gunman. I won't draw. I'd hate to turn my back. I won't draw. I... I'm dropping my gun. Go on. Get out. Go on. Get out. Can't shoot an unarmed man. No, but I can sure beat you to death. <laughs> time in years. You're hurt. Got a fight. Is your father still asleep? Let me help you. Please. Come into the kitchen. See you come in here. Not as far as I know. Who were you fighting with? Stanley. Stanley? He was in back of it all. Joiner, stagecoach, all of it. The coach? That's why I got him. Because of that child. Oh. That little. Wait.
What is it, Doctor? Looks like a slight concussion. He'll be all right if he gets plenty of rest. Does your father know he's here? No. Everybody else does. Clanton saw him leave the church and head up your front steps. Must have been right after he tangled with Stanley. You know about that, too? Sure. I just finished treating him. Mr. Stanley? Then he isn't? He's all right. Still didn't kill him, if that's what you mean. Didn't kill those others, either. How do you know? I just know. Don't open the door. They'll only break it down. You stay with him. I'll go. Don't tell them. We know he's here, Doc. Who do you want? The outlaw. Who are you? Killing? You know who? There's a sick man in here, but he doesn't fit the description of the man who shot Anderson. What are you trying to pull, Mason? The man we want is in this house, and we're going to take him. You can't have him now. Why not? Stop joking, Doc. Who says we can't? I say it. He's down with yellow fever. He's lying. If you think so, step inside and stand near his bed. We'll take him anyhow. He won't be sick long. Get out of the way, Mason. I can shoot him from the door. Get off this porch. She won't shoot. Let's drag him out and get another one. Yeah. Nadine! What's that? I'll kill the next one. Now get out of here. All of you. Nadine! You're only making a fool of yourself. In more ways than one, it looks like. You get out of this yard and stay out. What's going on here? Your daughter is hiding a murderer, Gil. It's Wesley Steele. Steele? Here? He killed six people in this town, Gil. And I saw him come into this house. Throw him out. He belongs in jail. Come on. We'll handle him. Wait a minute. Just hold on. I'll handle this. One inside the house. Then wait right here. And he stayed to take care of you when he might have got away. That's why he's still here. You through now? Do you think you can make me believe that Wes Steele stayed here at the risk of his own neck just to nurse me, the sheriff? You've been raised different than that. You ought to know better than to try to lie to me. How long has he been in my house? Where have you been hiding him? Carrying on with him behind my back while I was sick. Your mind's dirty. Do you hear? Dirty. Like that mob out there. You do that again and I'll kill you. So help me, God, I'll kill you. She means it, Gil. She loves him. Gil, doctors take an oath as well as sheriffs. And there's a reason for both. The one has to do with saving lives, no matter what I think about a man. That's why I told them he has yellow fever. The other binds you to uphold the law by due process. To protect an accused man against illegal violence, no matter what you think. It's a principle that's more important than that man or Nadine or me or you, Gil. You can't give them to that mob. fever. Otherwise, a thing like this had never happened. 
Nobody's blaming you, Gil. Just turn that killer over to us and go on back to bed. I'll make up my own mind about that. Then do it now. For your own good, Gil. I've always decided what's good for me and without any help from you. But he's a dangerous man, Gil, a very dangerous man. I'll still handle him myself. You're not gonna let us have him? No. Henry, go down to my office and bring me a set of leg irons and some shackles. This gunman won't be leaving here. You can bank on that. Chains on me? You know I didn't, but I couldn't stop it. They got my name on a rope, haven't they? Wes, can you talk a little? Yes, yeah, to you, honey. Stanley's alive. Oh, I'm so glad he didn't die. Well, if he died, we never could clear you. You think my word against his will do it? Got this town in his hands, you know that. Could you give me some of this water? What is it? Drink it down. Now try and sleep, you'll feel better. What you're looking for? What were you looking for? I know Stanley's got this town in his hand. But I never thought he'd have Gil Corrigan there. What makes you think he has? You said things while you were delirious. Things you never would have said otherwise. I was out of my head. What a man says when he's sick doesn't mean anything. That's what I thought at first. That's what I tried to make myself believe. But now I know better. The sheriff in this town gets his house free and $110 a month. How much have you been able to save out of that? Some. As much as I could. Not this much. Stanley came to Mesa six years ago. We were poor then. Remember? Real poor. We're not poor anymore. Who put these kind of notions in your head? That saddle tramp killer? A man who would shoot another man in the back and did? A man who shot down my own deputy the minute he hit town? Have you been taking advice from him? Why don't you mention all those people on the stage? He's supposed to have killed them, too. Well, why don't you? Why don't you? How do you know he didn't? Because he's not that kind of a man. And I don't believe you are either. You know where I was when all that happened? Yes. But I don't know where you were when the Trinidad Bank was held up. And the bonded stage line. And the assayer's office in New El Dorado. You didn't solve any of those, did you? Nobody was killed in any of them either. I don't hold with killing Nadine. Then don't let them kill Wes Steele. He'll have his day in court. He'll have five minutes in court if he ever gets that far. And you know it. West Steele's a gunman. He's killed in Texas and he's killed here. 
I don't set myself up as judge and jury like you. All I can do is turn him over to the court. And that's what I'm going to do as soon as he's able to walk. I've tried to raise you the best way I could. To make you happy. To teach you the difference between right and wrong. And then when I'm down and can't help myself, you get taken in by this, this saddle tramp. He's poisoned your mind and your heart, too, against your own father. Nadine, if I ever catch you at another low trick like this, I'll kill him myself. He won't sneak into another man's home and ruin it. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. You taught me the difference between right and wrong. You knew it once. Well, I haven't forgotten. You don't understand these things. I understand a lot more than you think. I'm not a child anymore. Have you heard what I said? Ah, Dr. Mason. Join me for a drink. Thank you. Don't care if I do. How's your star patient getting along? Better than I expected. He'll be out tomorrow. He can get around as good as ever, you mean? It seems my diagnosis of yellow fever was a little hasty. Thank you, gentlemen. Did you hear the doctor, Judge? How's that? West Steele will be able to stay in trial tomorrow. That's why I'm here, sir! <laughs> Bring him in. Meet me at the bank. Seems like a waste of soap. Don't say that. It's not very funny. No, I guess it isn't. But I'm not used to chains. It's the first time in my life, and I, I hate it. Wes, I've searched his pockets for the keys. I've looked everywhere. I don't know what to do. Don't cry, Nadine. I've had a good life, and I've lived it, all of it. But being Wes Steele, I knew it might end any minute. Of course, I'd like to live a hundred years if I could live with you. But if it's going to be tomorrow, well, don't let it worry you too much. The better man in West Steel will come for you yet. Steele's hand, that gun could kill five men. And I'd have to be the first. Nobody gave Elizabeth Nelson and her little girl a chance. That's not my fault. They're going to hang West Steele for those killings. And you're going to let them. How can I stop them? Tell them what you and Stanley have been up to for six years. Tell them the truth. You'd sell me out for a stranger? Sold yourself out, Dad. I won't try to justify what I've done, but maybe I can tell you why. This is hard country. It killed your mother, and I had to sit there and watch her die. She was as young and as pretty as you once. As young and as fine. We had high hopes and big dreams, but none of them came true. Not a one. The first year we were married, 
All the wells on the ranch went dry. Not a windmill turned for 240 days. The cattle broke into the yard and just stood there, bawling for water. We didn't have any. We sat praying for rain and watching them die one by one. Over a thousand head. I still hear those cattle in my sleep. We lost the ranch and moved into town, and you were born. Everybody was broke, had nothing, so I went up to Phoenix and worked on the new railroad for six cents an hour. And when I came back home, I found your mother taking in washing. So thin and so gaunt and so sick, I hardly knew her. It was too late to make things right for her, but it wasn't too late for you. You know how it is around here, Nadine. Hot and dry and dirty and dusty. Can't grow crops, you... You, half the time you can hardly raise cattle. It's dog eat dog. That's the only way a man can get along. Back east, they all talk about how wonderful the West is. How a man can get rich overnight. Just throw out a handful of seed or pick up some gold from a stream bed. Folks that tell you that have never seen the West. At least they've never seen what I have. Back east, they've got different ideas about what's right and what's wrong. They'd say it's wrong for a sheriff to make a deal with a man like Stanley. It is wrong. I had to live. You had to live. You were only two years old when your mother died. And I promised myself right then that you'd never know a hungry day or a cold night. So far, I've kept that promise, Nadine. And I mean to go on keeping it. I don't know how exactly. But given West Steel, that gun won't make things right. Go on, honey. You better get some sleep. I'll figure something out. I'll figure something. I'm not asleep. Hold out your hands. So I run and get shot trying to escape, huh? Here, strap this on you and get your hat on. It's almost daylight. You're taking the chance giving me this gun? I guess not. I'm going to kill Stanley the first time I see him. You're not going to see him. You sure of that? Be quiet. You wake up, Nadine. Stanley's in back of all these killings. You know that as well as I do. What I know is my business. Come on, we go through the cellar door. Ridge, you'll pick up the old army road to the Colorado. It's Apache country. What's going to happen when they find out you've turned me loose? Let me worry about that. I'm thinking about Nadine. So am I. You tell her I'll be coming back for her. No, you won't. Not if you care anything about her, you won't. Nadine's got good stuff in her. Maybe she didn't get it from me, but it's there. I want her to marry a man with a longer prospect of life than you've got.
been. Where is he? He's gone. You turned him loose? I don't believe he did those killings. That's for the course to decide, Gil. I've decided already. That man's got to be brought back. I'll try and make you tell where he went. They might. Let's get out of here. Now. There's nothing to run away from, Nadine. is able to stand trial, we shall proceed with it. Now here comes Dr. Mason. Corrigan turned him loose. You're joking. I just came from there. He's gone. Why should Corrigan turn him loose? That I can't say. You must know something. There's something between that daughter and steel. You've no need to say that. We'll find out from Corrigan. <laughs> Stanley, you'd better get out there and quiet those people down. What can I do? They'll listen to you. They won't listen to anyone. gil has been your friend for a long time. So was Luke Joyner. <laughs> Paul, you've been drinking too much. If you won't, Judge Wortham, there be no lynching. Ortega, go out and help. Sheriff? What are you going to do? I'm going to throw up. You should have kept riding with Wes. I live here, Nadine. Didn't take them long. Where is he, Gil? They say you turned him loose. It wasn't Steele that killed those people on that You're stage. You dirty liar! Was... You turned him loose because he's been carrying on with that daughter of yours! <laughs> got to get the sheriff away from that mob. Besides, he knows where Steele is. He'd only lie to us. Looks like he's in with Steele. I don't believe it. I won't believe it. Stanley to come out and give his orders to me. Who are you? Where's Steele? Turn that man loose. I'll kill the first man that goes for his gun. That's far enough. You want to be first? I can hit a lot of you before I go down. You with the rope. Take it off. Take it off! Untie his hands. Now get him out of there. The 
This is a rotten town with a lot of rotten people in it. But for once, you're going to listen to the truth. The man who murdered those people on the stagecoach is working for one of your most distinguished citizens. Get out there and gun him down. Stanley! Come out and tell us how you shot Luke Joyner in the back. Come on out, Stanley! What you got in Come on, Stanley, and deny it. Go on. Get out there! I'll go. I know. I work for Stanley. Look at me. I'll blow you to pieces, Stanley. Drop it. You're forgetting Corrigan. You're in this as much as I am. Am I? It's going to be your word against mine. I'll take my chances. Come on. Hey, you. Out. Two down and lock them up. You better go with Steele, honey. What about you? I'll stay here. Don't worry, I'll be all right. No. No, I'm not leaving you. There's no life for you here. This is a rotten town. Wherever he takes you, it's got to be better than this. She's not going anywhere with me. Because I'm not leaving. Who knows if this place is any worse than the next one I'd hit. But from the way things look now, it's got a good chance of being better. I'm staying. Let's go home. 